Russia's economic minister today said the country's GDP may actually be above the government's forecast of 1.8%. I have Christopher Hartwell, head of economic research at the Institute of Emerging Market Studies. So Christopher, do you believe this forecast is realistic and even maybe conservative? Uh, I think if anything, the forecast is optimistic. I mean, you have to think the IMF downgraded Russia's uh, economic forecast at 1.5% this year for GDP. I think that's probably more in line with what we're seeing. We've seen a real pullback in consumption. Uh, government spending has kind of flatlined. So with consumption really taking a nosedive, I don't think we're going to see uh, this, this kind of, this extraordinary growth that the economics minister says. Uh, Dmitry Medvedev, the uh, Russian president, said today, uh, excuse me, the Russian prime minister, said today that Russia is in a deep structural crisis and faces the abyss. So you've got really these two separate views of the Russian economy. And I think Medvedev is closer to where really the Russian economy is than the economics minister. And Christopher, in a recent report by the World Bank, it believes we could see a rise in Russian exports in the fourth quarter of this year if the global economy continues to recover. However, it sees oil prices remaining stable. Do you agree with this? Well, the exports increasing is basically the, the staple, the World Bank, the IMF, and all economists say. If the, the world economy starts going again, if the US starts picking up, especially if the Eurozone troubles, and I mean, I think we should see Russia's exports uh, increase if the Eurozone troubles really kind of resolve themselves. Exports have been fairly steady in, from Russia over the past two years. Uh, there is kind of a contradiction though, you know, them claiming that oil prices will be stable. If anything, we should see oil prices rise as the advanced economy is really uh, kicking in more demand. So I agree there is kind of a contradiction there. I think possibly if the U.S. economy gets going and maybe there's some domestic changes in the U.S., uh, especially regarding kind of the, the shale oil revolution, then it might actually moderate oil prices as more supplies come online. And so the demand goes up, but the, the more supplies are coming in too. So oil prices might remain stable. Russian exports non-petroleum should increase though. And despite the report's moderately positive outlook, of course, downside risks remain. One of these risks includes the potentially temporary negative impact tapering could have on Russia through lower oil prices. What are your views on this, Christopher, in terms of downside risks for Russia? Yeah, well, I think tapering is going to be one of the least risks that Russia is looking at. I mean, Russia isn't as tight in as other emerging markets when it comes to kind of the, the flow of liquidity that's been coming from developed economies due to kind of quantitative easing. I think the big problem is going to be investment. Investment has struggled in Russia, and a lot of the pullback we see in economic growth now is coming because of these large public investment programs, the Sochi Olympics, um, some kind of the these railway investments are really winding down now. There needs to be more private investment to really pick up the slack, and it's not being done. Again, as Mia said, that we're really looking at an abyss right now that needs structural changes. Without the structural changes, we don't get the private investment. Without the private investment, we don't get the growth, and that really is the downside risk for Russia. Great, thank you very much, Christopher. As always, it was a pleasure. Well, viewers, make sure you also have a look at my press review on the rise in Japanese CPI. But for now, have a great weekend.